Hey guys, what's up? Hope you have enjoyed our tutorial videos on post processing start rails with Lightroom, Starstacks, and startrails.de. If you haven't watched those videos yet, you can find the link for the same in the description below. Also, we have created the ultimate guide for start rail photography for you, link for which is also in the description below. Download this guide for free and have fun with start rails. Today we are going to learn how to stack multiple foreground images with start rail photo. One of the most important techniques. Many people have been asking about this. So let's start. Remember that while shooting, reach the location early and first imagine the final photo in your mind. Capture the foreground photos as per your imagination. Like in this image I have imagined the tent and firelit foreground with beautiful trails in the backdrop. So, I started shooting each element separately. First tent, then well-lit foreground, then fire and finally the start rails. In post-processing, we will stack all the above four images to get this final start rail image. So, let's get started. This is the Adobe Photoshop software. I have already done the basic editing of RAW file and Lightroom, then exported them as JPEG and stacked the JPEG start rail images in Photoshop. You can find the detailed tutorials for above steps in the description below. Here are the four images. Fire, well-lit foreground, start rails and tent. This is the final edited Photoshop start rail image. Here you can see that we have the base layer as tagged start trail image and above that we have three elements for foreground. Now we will learn the stacking method. Go to files, scripts, Load files into stacks. Browse to the location where you have saved the separate images. Select the images. Select the attempt to automatically align the source images. This will align the four images. Photoshop will automatically align all the images and load them as different layers. Let's select all the images apart from the start trail image and click on the group symbol to put all the images with which we are going to form the foreground in one group. Now let's crop the image. Done. We are going to use the masking technique to combine all the different images. First, let's put a layer mask on the complete group to separate the foreground and the sky. Done. Now we have to keep only three important elements, tent, fire and well-lit foreground. Mask the remaining image. Let's start with the tent. Select the tent image and select a layer mask. To add masks to the layer, press Ctrl I. This will hide the layer. Now we will select only the tent with the brush tool. Press B to access the brush tool and make sure you have white color selected. Now very carefully select only that part of the image where we have the tent. In case by mistake you have selected an unwanted area in the image, just change the color to black and paint with it. This will deselect the unwanted area in the image. Remember that our layer mask is black. So we will paint with white color to make part of image like the tent visible. If you paint with black, that part of the image becomes invisible. Now using this technique, let's select the tent. Done. Let's see before and after image. An important trick, we have something called as opacity. It controls the amount of details visible of the layer you are painting. You can control it from here. 
Opacity control is useful while painting with the brush on the edges of your subject like the tent. We can control the opacity in two ways. One is in the top of the editing window. This opacity controls the brush stroke. The second opacity is above the layer panel and this controls the opacity of the complete layer. The shortcut to use second opacity is very simple. Just select the layer and press any numeric number to get that percent of opacity. For example, for 60% opacity, just select the layer and press 6. Done. Using the above techniques, we will do masking on all the remaining images. The second image we will mask is foreground image. The method would remain the same. So let's mask this layer and press Ctrl I and color with white on this mask with brush tool. Done. Let's see the before and after image. Finally, we will now mask the fire image. The fire is hiding the tent. So we will change the position of the fire so that the tent will be visible. Few people say that this is a photo manipulation. Photographer shouldn't do this. But I believe that adjusting colors and altering the image is also photo manipulation. You try to show an unrealistic image in any case. So why can't we manipulate the photos as per our imagination to get the final image? Yes, this image is photoshopped. Let them say it. All I am concerned about is getting the final image as I had imagined on location. Now let's mask the fire and change its position. Done. Here we have the final star trail foreground stacked image. We can do some more touch up to this final image and adjust colors, contrast and exposure to get the final image. Hope you have loved this tutorial. Let us know your queries in the comments below. If you want us to make videos on any specific photoshop technique for star trails, let us know in the comments. We will try to make those videos. Till then, bye.